Hello, my name is Michelle Morand. I am a precision cancer medicine educator and advocate, and I'm here with precision cancer medicine expert, Alexander Rowland. Uh, he's prepared a little presentation for you about uh, a very exciting recent study that's going to give a lot of people with ER positive breast cancer a lot more time and a lot more hope. Alex, tell us all about it. Yeah, this is an exciting new study. It's about uh, neoadjuvant immune therapy for ER positive breast cancer. Before we go through this, um, I just want to uh, establish something about this presentation. This presentation is covering three important key take-home points. Um, number one is that a pathological complete response in estrogen-positive breast cancers is definitely improves long-term outcomes. The second point is you can improve the pathological complete response rate by using neoadjuvant immune therapy. And the third point is really when it comes to immune therapy, timing is everything. So I'm going to start with the first part of this presentation, and it's about this uh, great new study. So typically immune therapy drugs such as uh, PD-1 inhibitors um, like pembrolizumab have been a game changer ever since they've been out. They can get long-term viral responses in a variety of different cancers. However, this has never panned out in estrogen-positive breast cancers. Um, and, um, you know, typically these drugs are used in the late stage and they can be quite effective in the late stage. But um, when they were used in late stage estrogen positive breast cancers, they didn't improve survival at all. Hmm. So, however, a recent study has found that when you use it in a different setting, in the new adjuvant setting, which means prior to surgery, and then continue it in the adjuvant setting, which means post-surgery, it leads to improved outcomes in patients with breast cancer, uh, estrogen-positive breast cancer, regardless of their age or menopausal status. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just going to share the data for that. Um, this was done in the Keynote 756 trial. Uh, in this trial, what they did was they had women with uh, 1,300 women with invasive ductal carcinoma, ER positive. They received either pembrolizumab or placebo. Uh, in addition to the neoadjuvant chemo. So in other words, the chemo that's normally done in the neoadjuvant setting for this type of cancer. And then they followed that by adjuvant pembrolizumab or placebo in combination with the standard endocrine therapy, which is typically what is done in this type of cancer. So um, the outcome in this trial was quite interesting. What it did is it improved something called the pathological complete response rate. And I'll go into detail about that in a minute. Um, so for patients under 50, the pathological complete response rate, or PATH-CR as we call it, was 23.8% versus 16.9. So as you can see for chemo, um, not a lot of patients in the neoadjuvant setting get a good response from chemotherapy from the standard care in this type of cancer. In patients uh, 50 years and older, it was 24% uh, versus 14.2%. Premenopausal women, it was 23 versus 16.1 and postmenopausal 24.8 versus 14.6. So, you know, it's almost like a doubling in some cases, uh, you know, close to it, just under a doubling of the pathological complete response rate. So the pathological complete response rate is defined as the absence of residual uh, disease of the complete resected area or all sampled regional lymph nodes following completion of neoadjuvant systemic therapy. So in other words, once they finish the neoadjuvant systemic therapy, then they go in there and they do the surgery. If they don't find any cancer, then they say that you have a pathological complete response. This is really kind of the holy grail of many different types of cancers, you know, especially uh, colorectal cancer, many different types of cancers. However, one of the issues here is, so we do know that in HER2 positive and triple negative, having a pathological complete response from neoadjuvant chemotherapy, um, which is usually what's been tested, has really resulted um, in long-term overall survival. However, in the ER positive, you know, the estrogen positive uh, breast cancers, up until recently, the benefits of a pathological complete response from neoadjuvant standard care, which means chemotherapy and radiation, um, has, has not really been established. So if you speak with a doctor, you'll, you know, and you do get a pathological complete response from your standard care, um, and you ask them, you know, what's the benefit of this? They'll say, well, you know, less surgery, but we don't know how it's going to affect your long-term outcomes. In other words, we don't know if it's going to change things for you in a big way, like it does with other cancers. Now, this is largely because normally the pathological complete response rate from neoadjuvant standard care 
uh, really hasn't achieved good results. And as you can see from this study, you know, it's roughly about 15%, 16%, 14% or so. So there's really not a lot of um, patients who achieve a pathological complete response to neoadjuvant standard care uh, to really determine whether it benefits them or not. So in this trial, adding the pembrolizumab to neoadjuvant chemotherapy did not delay the time to surgery. And this is a big factor because a lot of times when we find a study that shows that adding neoadjuvant immune therapy improves the pathological complete response rate, the doctors always seem to complain that it's going to potentially cause complications and put off surgery. In this study, it did not delay time to surgery. The average time to surgery in both groups was about one month. And then after um, the average time after surgery to start the adjuvant treatment uh, was about 1.2 months in both groups. So really, the pathological complete response rate, I just want to cover that right now. A recent study on new adjuvant treatment and survival outcomes based on pathological complete responses in estrogen-positive breast cancers has shown now that women who did not have a pathological complete response were more likely to have their cancer become worse or die. So in other words, not getting a pathological complete response really shows a reduced benefit. And so this means that a pathological complete response could be a better way than determining overall survival in clinical trials to identify which treatments work well in early breast cancer and importantly, change the course of the patient's journey in the long, in, in the big picture. So I'm just going to share some data here. So as you can see, this is uh, from this study. And the top line um, was with patients that had a pathological complete response. Now, this is not from immune therapy. This is a separate study just on the benefits of achieving a pathological complete response from standard care, chemotherapy, radiation, and so on or you know, if it was done in that setting. And so as you could see, a huge um, reduction. So the, the events probability was significantly different um, here, uh, time to progression in patients that, that got a pathological complete response versus patients who did not. And then also um, the overall survival, um, you can see you know, that's significantly different too. So you're saying, there was obviously just kind of a, an either an understanding or data collection issue um, because even with standard of care, you can improve the likelihood of a PCR uh, mm -hmm. with neoadjuvant therapy. That's kind of the main point here. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But then it's even better if we add that immune therapy. Well, the chances, the chances of you getting a pathological complete response with this type of cancer from standard care is about 14, 15 percent. Right. So not very about, good. And when you add this immune therapy, you increase that to, you know, not quite double, but almost double. So much better, much better rates. So yeah. this is, um, this speaks to one of the three founding principles for precision oncology. And that is the right drug for the right person at the right time. And this speaks to the right time. Yeah. And so if you, if you have immune therapy um, in later settings, it doesn't work. But if you do it in the neoadjuvant setting, it seems to really provide benefits here. Mm -hmm. So why is that? Timing is everything when it comes to immune therapy. So uh, what we now know is the use of immune therapy in the new adjuvant setting is supported by preclinical studies that show that a stronger and broader immune response can be generated when immunotherapy is administered with the primary tumor and or regional lymph nodes intact. In other words, prior to surgery. So why is this? What is thought? is that the primary tumor has a bunch of antigens. And antigens are what we refer to as antibody generators. They create antibodies. They allow our immune system to take a snapshot of the tumor and then make antibodies. So if the tumor starts growing again or the cancer comes back, then these um, antibodies can identify the tumor cells so the immune system can attack it. So it's kind of like having a vaccination where you, know, you, you create this subset of immune cells ready, poised and ready to target the tumor. And so interesting enough, when tumors metastasize, they lose a lot of these antigens. In other words, they become sort of naked on the outside. And so it's harder for the immune system to recognize them then. So having more antigens and having a better immune snapshot of these antigens um, really helps the immune system fight a lot more of these tumors. And this is a theme we see in a lot of different cancers where, you know, neoadjuvant immune therapy works great, but in later settings, not as effective. 
So in other words, doing immune therapy in the neoadjuvant setting allows the immune system to get a better snapshot of what to target later on. And therefore, uh, as and if the cancer starts to come back or something starts to resurface, your body is already primed and ready to attack it. It can't hide in the way that it was earlier. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that covers our presentation. Okay. So I I appreciate what you're saying here. We... uh, uh, I guess what I want to say is to those of you at home who might then want to go and talk to your doctor about, uh, you know, if if you happen to catch this video early in your diagnosis, before you've had surgery, or you know somebody who's in that stage, and they ask their doctor about immune therapy, um, take this, uh, take the video, but also maybe take the study with you to speak to them because your doctor's going to very likely be operating from some outdated information about this. As Alex said, they might say PCR doesn't mean anything based on a lack of studies and old data. As Alex just showed you, it actually does. It means something even when standard of care is used and it means even more uh, when the immune therapy is added up front. We have this weird thing in cancer care right now where patients are still being expected to go through first, second, third line chemotherapies, and then maybe genetics are done, or then maybe innovative therapies are added. It's always frustrated the heck out of us. Hey, Alex, but this this is an excellent study. And there are so many like this, aren't there, that show how critical it is that you get on the best targeted therapy, or in this case, immune therapy up front. And that can make a huge difference to whether your cancer ever comes back. So strongly advocate for this for yourself or someone you love, this is their case, Um, or tap us in in one of these ways. You can have a consultation with Alex and he will advocate with your doctor for you. Mm -hmm. Join our free online educational program. You can chat with us every week, ask your questions live on Zoom, and of Mm -hmm. course, subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay informed. Yeah, Um, and I think you you hit a really good point there. Um, Hitting cancer hard up front even if it is not an aggressive cancer, even if it's an early stage, is so important because it reduces the heterogeneity. In other words, it reduces the subpopulations that are different and vary within the tumor um, that can cause the treatment resistance later on down the road. And also, um, if you want to get, uh, if you if you're interested in doing this and you have estrogen positive breast cancer and you haven't quite yet had surgery yet, um, give us a call. We can write up a white paper for your doctor. Um, Follow, uh, covering this and addressing all of their concerns so they're more likely to be on board with you using this approach. Yeah, that's the key is your, do- your doctor wants to help you, but they need the data and they don't have a lot of time. So presenting them with the facts in a succinct way that helps them to do what you need them to do is really the key here. So let us know how we can help you. Hope you found this valuable. Please li- leave a comment, send us a message, let us know. Uh, what you think of the video. And if there are any other topics that you'd like us to make videos on, let us know. Thanks for watching. Bye.